coding made easy. What's up, everybody, and welcome to your next C++ SFML 2.0 tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be learning about bounding box collision. Now, there's different types of collision: bounding box, distance, space, and pixel. Those are the three main ones I'm going to be showing you. And this one is bounding box. Now, what is bounding box collision? Well, it's collision between two rectangular areas, and that's why it's called bounding box because a box is a rectangle or whatever. So, um, a rectangle or square. So, anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, a player class. If you don't know about classes, then I suggest you review on classes before you continue with this. Um, so we're gonna make uh make everything public now. Normally would have a private I normally put this in the private section, but um, The reason why I'm putting it in public is just to make it simpler and make it um, Make it easier for you guys to interpret. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a float um, We're gonna say bottom left right up or something and then we're gonna have a constructor and we're gonna take in a vector 2f for position uh, a vector 2f for um, our size and our color okay and then we will say that rect dot set position so equal to position rect dot set size equal to size and rect dot set fill color is equal to color okay simple enough and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a void update and this update we're gonna say that um, bottom is equal to rect dot get position dot y plus rect dot get size dot y so that's gonna be um, the coordinates of the bottom of the rectangle so for the left it's gonna be rect dot get position dot x the right is gonna be rect dot get position dot x plus rect dot get size dot x and the up is going to be rect dot get position dot y so um that's gonna set the bottom of the rectangle the left of it the right and the up so it's gonna get the coordinates of these and and store it accordingly and um what we're going to do now is we're gonna make our collision now it's gonna be of, of a boolean return type and in the properties, it's gonna take a player instance, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make an if statement, and we're gonna say that if left is less than p dot right, or right is greater than p dot left, or um, or should be top, not not up. Let's change the top. And we'll say if top is greater than p dot bottom or bottom is less than p dot top, then we're gonna return false. And then we'll just put return true after. So it's basically saying else return true. We don't need to put else because if this doesn't execute, then this will automatically execute anyway. So we don't need to have the actual else. But um what is this saying right here so it's saying if the left of our player or yeah if the oh sorry this should be right less than player dot left and this should be if left is greater than p right if that makes sense okay so this is what's going to happen, okay? So so let me look at show you paint.net right here. So this is a player, uh, this is the enemy right here. So if the right side is less than the left side, it means there's no possible way for collision in any shape or form, right? It, there's no form of collision. 
if the left side of the player is greater than the right side of the enemy or the other player, that means there is no way for collision, right? If the top of the player is greater than the bottom of the other player, there's no way for collision. And if the bottom of the player is less than the top of the other player, that means there is no way for collision. And therefore, we will return false because there is absolutely no way for collision. And then if it isn't false, then we return true, meaning that it is colliding with the other player or the other enemy or whatever it is. Okay? So, um, this is what we're going to do uh, to run our program. So, we're going to make two player instances, um, say P1, P2, and player no default. Oh, I forgot to add in the constructor. Um, so, I'll just put player... Uh, Let's see. So for the position, we we'll put s of vector two. Um, set at ten ten. Uh, for the size, we'll set it at twenty twenty. And for the color, we'll just set it to red. Okay. And for the second player. Um, let's just copy this. Paste that right there. And we will set this position to 100, 100. And we'll set the color to blue. Okay. And we need to have something that says, uh, w okay, actually, never mind. So what we're going to do, we've gotten our players created. And... Sorry. So we've gotten both of our players created. So we'll put that there. And what we're going to do is we're going to call p1.update, p2.update. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to say that if we're just going to add in basic control. So if a keyboard is key pressed, uh, right. We will just move the player one dot rect. We'll move it to the right. And if they move left, they press the left key, then we'll move the rectangle towards the left. And this stuff should be easy peasy for you guys. Um, so if they press up, We'll move up. And last but not least, if they press down, then we'll move down. Okay, so that's just gonna move the player, then we're gonna update uh we're gonna update the player's position, uh, the position, so it's gonna set all the stuff that we need, uh, as for bottom, top, left, and right, and then we're gonna check for player collision. So we're gonna say that if p1 dot collision, and we're gonna pass in the p2 in there. So if it has collided, then we're just gonna write a message, and we're gonna say collision, and if not, then we're not gonna display anything to the screen. So, let's run this right now. Uh, oh, sorry. I forgot to draw them to the screen. Uh, so, we have to call window draw uh, rect p1.rect and window.draw p2.rect. And let's draw this. Let's run this. So we're moving. It's kind of staggered movement, not because I of my screen recorder. Nothing happens. We touch it. It says collision. We leave. Nothing happens. We touch it. It says collision. So as you can see, we got bounding box collision um, set up on our um, on our game. 
So you can do a lot with that. You can um, cloud with sprites. You can do anything you need to do for collision. So um, basically, you just have to check, do these checks to see if it collides. If it if these checks and if any of them are true, we return false. Other than that, that means we return true, and therefore there is a collision, and we can do different stuff with it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to follow on Twitter, like on Facebook, uh, join my circle on Google+, uh, join my forum, join my website, and uh, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. So bye for now. Later.